All right, Holly. So next up, we're going to talk about a subject very near and dear to both of our hearts. Yeah. And that is actually two topics. It's one, loop components, which is actually how we did the show notes for our first show here. We did it in a, in yeah. a loop, loop page and a loop workspace and a loop component that we shared Correct. through Teams. Um, and we're also going to be talking about OneNote. So loop components are going to be available in Microsoft OneNote starting in early April and right. in the desktop app coming in June. So if you go to the web version of OneNote yep. right now, you can insert a loop component. Right. If you go to the desktop version, and we were talking about this on the last Let's Talk podcast, not to be confused with the UWP version of OneNote, <sighs> which they retired after there was too much <laughs> feature, fra feature fragmentation. Right. Um, you will not be able to use that yet, but it is coming in June. And I know this because I tried it as soon as I saw this notification in the message center and on the roadmap, right. because if I feel like Microsoft is in this weird spot where they want loop to become the new one note, but it is not fully feature driven to right. fit that need yet. Like one for those that don't know, loop is Microsoft's version of notion and notion yep. is a collaborative one note type application that does a lot of stuff that loop doesn't do today but loop is adding on features as they go and they're right. getting closer and closer and closer so um but very similar structure right yep you got notebooks you got sections you got pages just replace notebooks with like workspaces right workspaces pages components you have that sort of tiered model and, but yeah, like you said, they're, they're, they've been two very separate things and yep. now they're sort of, we're, we're going to start to have visibility. Yeah. So I've got a couple screenshots up on the screen. They look almost identical. And again, this is because the web versions are becoming closer and closer to what the desktop versions look yep. like, but you'll be able to, on the insert tab, be able to just click on loop component. And then you'll right. be able to add it in and then you can take that loop component. And again, as long as you have enabled it in your organization, which at right. this point, if you haven't, please do. And then you'll be able to take those OneNote uh, um, documents and just insert the component. And then you, again, you can take that loop component, you can put it into a workspace, you right. can take that OneNote component, you can put it into an Outlook or a Teams message. And in the future, Holly, I don't think that they've added it to Word quite yet, at least not Word desktop app, but yeah, you will be is, able to do something really, later. Yeah, this is a really funny thing. I know we said we weren't going to talk about Copilot, but Copilot availability in OneNote is almost the reverse right now. So yep. you can use Copilot in OneNote in Windows, the Microsoft 365 app in Windows, but Copilot in OneNote for the web is not available. So just like reverse that. But I think that this is this is a good advancement because one of the conundrums that we often have with OneNote, especially the newer web version, this kind of new version that the web and Windows and Teams are going to be sharing, it's really hard to share a page with someone. It's yep. hard to say, I have this whole notebook. And I want to just show this one page to Scott or just work with Scott on this one single page. In OneNote, I would have to share the whole notebook with Scott or migrate that page to a different shared space. Either way, it's not easy. Here I can say this component's in my notebook, but I want to work with Scott on it. So I get to have the best of, best of both worlds. And I think you're right. I, I really see, and this is maybe after years of working on Microsoft 365 with, you know, their updates and things like that. Sometimes it could be hard to figure out like, why are they making this change? Why are they doing it this way? I really do believe like you that it's like, it, it's this sense of we have changes in our back pocket waiting in the wings where we're going to be merging OneNote and Loop and trying to make these more cohesive tools so we're going to be strategic in how we we have them talk to one another strategic about what updates go into what tool at what time so i i hope that this just means more good things in the future for both tools yep no matter if they stay separate or become more one I, i'm not really sure but i think it's a good thing 
Yeah. And I mean, over the last five to 10 years, technology has really changed a lot. And I think that a lot of companies have realized that we need to start developing for web first rather than hard coded desktop. You're going to install this just because people are working more off their phones. They're working off more tablets now and mm -hmm. less off a traditional laptop or desktop. Um, and even in the cases that you are working off a laptop or desktop, I mean, like this is, we talked about this back in December. This is the great use of having an F3 license is if you don't actually need to install it and you can do everything from the web, yep. just save yourself some costs there, or just do a couple of bolt-ons here and right. there for the extra stuff that you need. But yeah, as we see more stuff, and again, I know that there is a lot of naysayers and people that are upset about the changes, to teams, and mostly mm -hmm. the changes to Microsoft Outlook is they're, they're doing this so that they can prepare themselves for the future. Right. And that's going to lead to a better experience for all of us in the long run. Yeah, I mean, out, the outlook changes alone. We know that this is going to be a big deal, but I can only imagine how much they're going to be able to do, how many features we're going to be able to realize in that app life cycle once mm -hmm. their product team doesn't have to develop for four separate you know, versions of Outlook. Um, yep. it, it, it's, it's a good thing, but as an end user in the moment, while this change is happening, you know, they're thinking 20 steps ahead, but we're having to deal with that for, you know, first step on that change journey. So I get it, but I really do think that this, you know, again, there, you, some of these things like using loop components in OneNote, um, I hope that you can see it as like a good thing. But some some of our, our listeners, some of our viewers might still be thinking like, I still can't really figure out why and what and how for a loop. It's okay, right? If, 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 the, you're, if the OneNote concept is really solid for you, let that stuff start to come in and, and show itself in a place where you're familiar. Yeah, and if you're an IT admin or you're just an IT, like general, like kind of like change champion or you work in training or anywhere else in the organization, like, T start taking a look like if you start taking a look at Microsoft loop and try mm -hmm. and understand use cases for where you can actually fit that into your different work streams. And Holly, you and I did yep. a podcast back about this in the fall last year, but maybe as loop is developing more and more, maybe we should actually revisit that topic and do more of a kind right. of formal kind of like run back on it and look at, Hey, here's how it was. Here's what's changed. Here's what's coming yeah. on the pipe. I mean, we, we, you know, I guess, we talked about before the show, we talked about some honorable mentions thing. I mean, we didn't do, we were talking about loop recently and, and you could not share a loop component externally. Yep. And now that's yep. coming to, so I think it is, it's always worth, a, you know, kind of a good rule of thumb for a lot of Microsoft 365 tools. It's always worth, worth a second look, especially those that are brand new because they're just babies. They're just babies and they grow, they grow up so quickly. They grow so, up so quick. You got to take a look, you know, I mean, think about the, you know, seven, eight year journey that teams took, right? It's, it was a long time, but it's, I mean, when teams first started, we were, I think we were all kind of like, oh, so it's just. It's a chat Skype, program. This right? is, this is you know? Skype with a T. So now. It's so much more and the concept is so much more apparent. So that's kind of where I say, like, don't write loop off. Don't, you know, kind of like give it some time. If Microsoft's going to make it make sense.